Hey everyone, in this video, I'm gonna explain the website project checklist assignment. So you guys have been working hard on your personal websites. You, build, you built all the content with your HTML and then you designed it and styled it with CSS. So the purpose of this checklist is really just to make sure that you've done all the things that I've asked you to do in the screenshot assignments and to make sure that you have it all and to just kind of evaluate yourself on how it looks. So here's how it works. You're gonna go down through each of these numbers and it's gonna tell you either what you should do or what you should have. So the first thing is to go to code.org lesson 14 level two. And you're just gonna click there and it's gonna open up code.org for you so that you're on the page that you need to be for your final website. So any you know, changes that you need to make at this point can be done on this level. Then you're just gonna keep going through to make sure that you've done all these things. So I would say that numbers two and three are actually the most important things on this entire list. So number, number one or number two on the list, making sure that you have a style sheet and linking it on your index page. So for each of these steps, I have the level on code.org that explains it. So for example, the level that explains how to add a style sheet and where to link it is right here on lesson 10, oops, level 13. So it explains it up here. It explains that you add the style.css page and then that you, you link it in the head section of your HTML. So, if you're not really understanding the code.org instructions, I also have my video instructions linked here on the check sheet. So you're gonna do that with not only the main page, but also your hobby page. Make sure that your style sheet is linked on the hobby page. So I'm gonna actually do that right now. The easiest way to do this is to copy and paste. I'm gonna copy and paste. And now you'll see, that my style sheet is now styling my hobby page in addition to my main page, which is what we want. We want the website to be totally consistent. All right, so make sure you do that. That's step three. Steps four and five are just to make sure that you have all the properties that were required of you throughout the project. So you needed at least three text properties like font, family, text align, or color. And you needed also three layout properties like background color, height, width, or a border. So of course you can apply those multiple times, but they, you need to have three different ones from each of those categories. On the second page, you have a few more project requirements like adding an RGB value to your website, adding a class to your website. And remember, I have all of the instructions right here if you are not sure how to do that. Making sure you have a cool text logo. And then at the end, after you make sure that you have everything that was required of you, and by the way, if you have it, you check off the box, yes, I have it, and you get the points for that. But if you don't have it, then you check this box. And I would encourage you, if you don't have it, to reach out to me and I will help you add it to your website. Don't, don't lose the points on it. Um, if you have some type of comment for me, you can write it over here. You can leave this blank, it's optional. And in the end, you wanna troubleshoot. So make sure you have semicolons at the end of each rule. So let's take a look at what that looks like here. So what I mean by that is that every single rule on your page has that semicolon and you know you have your curly braces and there's no pink errors. Uh, with CSS, you also get the pink errors. So make sure everything is working, there's no pink code, and most importantly, make sure you have all those semicolons. And then critique your page. You know, your page should follow a color scheme. You know, I applied um, that blue and orange color scheme to my page. 
you know, make sure that, you know, your headings all match. So this is what I did. I made sure my main heading matched up with my subheadings down here and that, you know, my paragraphs and my lists all matched. So you should do the same because uh, that is what makes your website look consistent and aesthetically pleasing. Okay, so you get points for aesthetic. So if you guys have any questions about, about the final project, uh, make sure you send me a message on Canvas or an email. I'd be happy to help. I can always um, get onto your page and I can see what's going on if you have an error that you can't figure out. And um, again, just, you know, if you are stuck, use these instructions. I have them all linked for you or just um, send me a message on Canvas. Um, and I just wanna say, you know, at the end, congratulations. This was a big project. We've been working on it for about six weeks. And remember that this is something that you guys can use. You know, in the end, you can click on that share button and you can get a URL, you know, text it to yourself um, or keep it somewhere safe. And this is always going to be where your website lives on the internet. So you can always, you know, use this for a job interview someday. You'll really impress someone. Or, you know, when you apply for scholarships at some point, I know other students who have used this website project um, for other things in their lives and it's um, paid off. So great job, everybody. Um, so that's the website project checklist and it, it um, concludes the HTML and CSS website project for the Elizabeth class. Thanks everyone. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.